players tonight and for the players to get things underway. Alex Hales has been in some superb form in this last few years. Sheldon Cottrell with the ball can always be effective in this format as well. Having a look at the points table and how things stand, obviously from Abu Dhabi Knight Riders' point of view, that doesn't make for good reading. They need to put points on the board. That net run rate could also be a major factor later on if they are to get some wins under their belt first. Desert Vipers, well, they've had a good start. Solid in that first game, very solid. They played a really, really good game. Well, as we get uh, ready and the players get into position, let's say a very good evening to Viz Voice, Patrick. Success for the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders batting lineup. Um, they struggled early on uh, in this tournament so far, so they need to aim for a steady start. The first game they lost two wickets in the power play. The second game they lost three wickets. That needs to be better, so they need to aim for a steady start, and that will give the lower order a platform. They look a lot stronger in the middle order today with the two Sri Lankans coming in. Plus, they've got the likes of Russell and the Ryan in the middle order. They need to give them a platform to go big at the death. We have seen a trend already in this uh, tournament in terms of team scoring big in the last 10 overs not often taking advantage necessarily of the power play now Brendan King will be opening up the batting today which is interesting we haven't seen the best of him just yet and hit the ball a long way though and he'll be opening up with uh, Kino Lewis has uh, come in he's come in tonight for Paul Sterling is on international duty Wow, well, it's a lot of West Indian flavour at the moment and we're being treated to a lot of Jamaican flavour too. Jamaican Spice, Sheldon Cottrell, is a really good performer in this format. He can take wickets with a new ball and he can be dangerous. We're just about ready to get underway. There'll be a few nerves out there in the middle as both teams look for another win tonight in match number seven. Let's play says the umpire on the money in the previous games we have seen that the ball have swung early on and we all been talking about that once the lights take full effect and go into the second inning the dew might come into play and the batting becomes a lot easier so it's very very important and crucial to start well pick up early wickets And Cottrell looks to swing that ball back into the right-hander. Couple there for him. Was not really in control of the shot. But good to see a little bit of swing there. Not too surprising that you would say it's good to see a little bit of swing. Well, I always like to see the ball swinging a little bit because uh, this format, T20, is all about ball flying all over the place off the bat, with sixes and fours and... And this is the first time I'm seeing that the ball is doing a little bit. So smart bowlers, they will have their say. We're looking after the, the match tonight. A couple of standing umpires out in the middle. So Jusam Manil will be standing tonight. And the local umpires, what an opportunity this is for them to get some really good exposure at a very high level of cricket and also umpiring with the experienced Rod Tucker as well. This has been good so far from Cottrell, especially his line. Yeah, if you have a left arm seamer or a swing bowler who can bowl in that off stump channel is always handy. Over the years we've seen so many left arm fast bowlers, they have had lots of success. So early on, uh, pitching it up is the key. A ring of fire. Beautiful day, a little bit chillier than the other day. On the money, where's that pitched? Be a few questions the umpire will ask. Where is it pitched? Is it too much bounce? They don't look that interested in even chatting about going upstairs. 
I think more than pitching, it was the height. The ball sort of uh, jumped up a little bit. That's why I say just pitch it up. Look to swing that ball. Give him that driving length. This was maybe a touch short. Yeah, hit him on the top of the pad. It probably would have gone on over the top of the stumps. No, this is too full. Good fielding. Very good fielding. Ball without loss off to the first. Well, there are a few clouds uh, hovering over and even in the afternoon uh, the clouds were there They're not seen much of a sun this afternoon so this might make a difference when you talk about the dew factor might have less dew i could never figure out though with the cloud there or not there, when the dew is going to come. But they, what I've been hearing is, if the clouds are there, there'll be chances of less dew. It's gone straight up. It's a steepler. The keeper says, this is mine. And gone. Gus Atkinson into the attack and gets a wicket straight away. Yeah, that's a bad shot. Playing across the line. And uh, not really assessing what the ball is looking to do. And that's not very good sign early on. Beautiful out swinger wanted to just hit through the mid wicket, just wanted to whip through the mid wicket. And a very comfortable, easy catch. No issue there at all. That's the first blow to the Knight Riders. The Lewis gone for one is four for one now. Jai De Silva makes his way to the crease. Gus Atkinson into the attack. Very first ball, picks up a wicket. It's his birthday tomorrow, old Gus Atkinson. Maybe it's an early birthday present for him. And Jai De Silva is a very good player. Really good to see, obviously, the Sri Lankans now joining the squad after international duty. Yeah, he's a very technical player. Mainly plays in the test squad. So he will look to sort of settle in early on. Because if the ball is swinging, you don't really need to play a shot which just we saw which Lewis played. There was no need of that. That ball was moving away from uh, him. And when you're looking to hit on the onside, there's very little chance of connecting unless you use your feet. Very nice. He's obviously seen that the ball is swinging away from Gus Atkinson, so better option to go with it. Well, if I'm a bowler, I wouldn't mind this. I know it's gone for four, ball has swung. Maybe I just need to pull a length, a touch. But what a beautiful stroke. He was right on top of the delivery. Good feet movement, good weight shift. Slightly opened the face of the bat. And the ball races away for four. Looks a very fine player. Yeah, 
sometimes simple cricket is just the way to go. Well, it's all time to have a little closer look at the Sports Buzz 11 starting lineups. How many of these you may have chosen at home? I reckon the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders might have been a little bit more difficult to guess in terms of who is going to be playing tonight because they've made so many changes for one, but also they haven't had the start they wanted. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That is a Sky Exchange .net Super 4. And a good way to end the second over. 14 for one. Well, I've seen that before from Dananje. He played a magnificent knock here against Pakistan in the Asia Cup. Had some beautiful shots. Another very good all-rounder. Ninety-three innings, got two thousand runs. The Ninja is a very, very good player. Liking this opening pair of Cottrell and Atkinson together because they complement each other. What a fantastic shot that last one. The ball was not there. He knew it. He knew that the ball is a little bit short. If I have to play drive, I have to go on the up. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't hold back. Just went with the shot. The hands gone quite nicely. in the surface at times we've seen just surprise the bat as well well we have played uh, on this pitch before the first game was played on this one and then we moved to the left and this one is drying up a little bit but it's good that it's hard and it's got a little bit of grass on it and then and, and as you'll see that uh, get into later on overs or maybe going into the second inning this will quicken up a little bit but it will come onto the bat even better another top edge another opportunity for the keeper and it's like an action replay and we love the celebration from Cottrell his military salute big trouble again for the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders against the new ball playing across is not the right way to go we saw Lewis playing a similar shot, short, the ball was pitched up. This time, the ball was touched short, but because of the bounce and the swing, got the top edge and another easy catch. Things are easy there for the wicketkeeper and Cottrell enjoying himself. Big smile, big salute, deserves the second wicket. 15 for two, the ninja gone for five. There's two slips in place. It just tells you, one, the state of the game, obviously, where the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders find themselves, but also the fact that the ball is swinging. And there's a little bit of bounce as well. So right now, the bowlers, I think, enjoying these conditions. Yeah. 
He didn't try to hit it. He just wanted to nudge it. But the thing is that he was a cross bat. It wasn't really with the straighter bat. He gave the ball to chance to bounce a little bit and got the top edge. Sometimes you get lucky. It goes over the wicketkeeper's head. But not this time. Best way to stop the run flow is to keep picking our wickets. been really good from the days of Vipers. They're bossing the game. It's 16 for two. What a start this has been for the Desert Vipers. Now, Colin Ingram now coming in at four today. Hasn't had the start to the tournament he would want. Very experienced T20 players, played all around the world. If he gets going, he can be very dangerous. The question is, can he do anything with the swinging ball? It's swinging, it's moving, finding a little pace off the surface as well. And the captain has said, all right, I'm keeping my opening bowlers on. Why not? And change something that's not broken. It's really not quite been the start that he would have wanted. All right, let's go back to his voice. Yeah, it's the uh, same old story for Abu Dhabi Knight Riders. Their troubles with the bat have been a recurring theme, unfortunately. These are numbers from, be from before this game. So if you look at there, they're bottom for both batting average and run rate. They're going at less than a run a ball at the moment, which is not going to win you many T20 matches. Uh, and the st yeah, it's continued again, so they need to improve somewhere. Wow, that's beautiful. It's so, it's one of those shots that you can watch over and over on repeat. Magnificent, what a start. Yeah, this will make him a world of good. He's been out of touch, out of form, but this shot, I'm sure he'll feel so good about himself. The pure timing, just punching down the line. Don't really have to hit hard. He didn't need to run even. That was hit so nicely. change of length from Atkinson off to being hit straight down the ground so just a little adjustment it's interesting when you when you look at those stats from an Abu Dhabi Knight Riders point of view and they're batting run rate of 5.7 now obviously no team wants it but you look at the, the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders you don't think that they would be struggling when it comes to run rate they've got some big hitters in their team also players that are very good at this type of format. They've played this format. They're experienced in this format. So it's definitely a surprise from them. This is brilliant. Wonderful show of bowling from the opening bowlers. Well, at the moment, Natalie, I don't think they're thinking of the run rate or, or anything else of that kind. They're just thinking, just get a win on the board. They just want to win the game and somehow get on the board and then think of the run rates and averages and all that. But yeah, they're well behind. Well, that's brilliant. That's played with some authority. Looking for a change of fortunes on an Abu Dhabi Knight Riders. That's 25 for two.
So four overs in, 25 for two. Uh, if there was a team talk in the Knight Riders dressing room before the game, it hasn't worked because the same problems seem to have recurred with the two early wickets. But King and uh, Captain Ingram can maybe do something about it. That's uh, down the leg side, wide called all too easily. This was a boundary. What a shot. That will give him a world of confidence and they need it. The Knight Riders, they lost, played two, lost two. And they're 26 for two in four now. Just going to hurry through. Ingram has to make sure he gets his ground at the non-striker's end. Went straight to the, the fine leg on the edge of the circle. Yeah, the recurrent problems, I'm afraid, for Knight Riders. They really do need... One, one thing they would... What's the right word for it? Uh, buy, happily, is a good opening partnership. Something just to build a platform, something to give the, the bigger men down the order, something to work with. Whenever you feel as though you're rebuilding right from the start, it just takes the impetus out of an innings. But you never know. That depends on Ingram. He's a very experienced player plays uh, franchise cricket all over the world and if he stays in they have a good chance to post a good total and of course when the big man comes in like David said Andre Russell he's most dangerous in last four to five overs not for 12 overs four to five yes yeah, good point you make about Ingram he knows what he's doing at the top of the order he's just changed his position slightly here today that's nicely played He's got the placement, he's got the timing, enough power in that just to split the gap and race away for four. Those are the shots that get you going. Those are the shots that just reaffirm that you can play this game. So after a couple of poor innings in the first couple of games, he seems, dare I say it, to begin the feel for things here. It wasn't a bad delivery at all. But he doesn't play on a front foot. He uses the crease beautifully, stays inside the crease most of the time. Ingram. I think it's a really good T20 pitch. As a batter, you just get in, see a couple of balls, and you can play it on the up, even bounce so far, and bit of swing with the new ball for the fast bowlers too. Yeah, there was a little bit of turn the other night as well in the first part of the game, especially. Less in the second innings. I think something to do with the Jew that night. And they say there's a breeze here tonight. Well, I know there is. I was down there. There is definitely a breeze here tonight. Well, that's gone through. That has cleared everyone. It's avoided the intended uppercut. It's cleared the head of Sam Billings. All buys signalled. Yeah, there's something there in the pitch. Yeah, if you bend your back, like Cottrell just did, came out of nowhere. It was 141 kilometers an hour, and keeper was the keeper has no chance whatsoever. So that's what exactly the skipper is saying. The wiper skipper, extra bounce. That's a good stop. 36 for two. Yeah, signs of uh, recovery here. Let's see how long they last. Sharp piece of fielding. So Knight Riders have jiggled the batting order. They've also jiggled the bowling attack as well for this match. And uh, as we well know, and as they especially know, they're overdue a win. 
interesting to see what happens with the, the bowling attack later. They've got more spinners involved in their attack tonight. Right, change the bowling, Tom Curran. Straightforward run. Good start by Curran. He's got fine leg up, third man up in the circle. He's got square leg back and man at extra cover on the boundary. So that means he should be bowling or he will be bowling just within the stumps back of a length like the previous delivery. 37 now in 5.1 overs. The Knight Riders, they need to post a good total here. We have seen teams chasing 180, 185 quite comfortably at times. Because, like David mentioned a little while ago, maybe a little bit of dew factor might be not there today because of the breeze, overcast conditions. Just slightly offline. A little bit of shape just down the leg side. So wide called. No leeway down that leg side for bowlers. Yeah, automatically, of course, we become not just players who become commentators who might know a little bit about the game, but weather forecasters, you know, weather experts, you know, that little extra breeze might just make the difference. Good variation. There was a slow ball and he missed it. Engram, he's 11 off 11. They need a partnership. Run rate is only 7.12. This is the last over of power play and then obviously the field will spread. But sometimes I think start like this, David. If the two wickets are down, the opposition batting team is under pressure. This kind of a different slow ball. Maybe he's holding the ball right inside his thumb and his fingers. Yeah, you would know more, more about it than I would, but the, the various tactics that bowlers use, you know, in some ways, there's, or quite often there's an assumption that you have to wait until later in the game to get clever. Why? You know, he's very clever, this guy. Tom Curran, obviously, with um, you know, superstar brother Sam as inspiration as well. But Tom's been around a lot long enough to know what to do in these T20s, whether they be franchise, domestic, international. Yeah, and those variations can come in as early as you like. Well, the appeal, I think, will be just denied. The shuffle had gone and taken him right outside off stump. Leg by signals. Well, Tucker just calmly goes about his business. All for the shuffle, but there was no need for this shot. Try to play with a straight bat like Alex says did the other day. He played with a straight bat, threw mid off, threw mid on, and over his bowler's head. And this is asking for trouble. And uh, if you notice, after pitch, the ball pitched, it seemed back into the right hand. So there is a bit of a movement for fast bowlers for medium paces. Change of field. Now he's got mid wicket back on the boundary and man behind square leg. Fine leg up, square third man up. So it's got to be middle leg. Sure is. Yeah, I mean, the skill, and again, this is your department rather more than mine, but the skill is setting these fields, yep, and then <laughs> making sure you bowl in the right place. Especially in the first six overs, because margin of an error is hardly there. Run rate is seven now, just over seven for Knight Riders. They need a partnership. I mean, this guy, Ingram, if he bats on for another ten overs, he'll definitely get runs. He's a proper batter who travelled travels all over the world just for franchise cricket. That's his speciality. Usually a bat's at number four, but uh, he is at number four. Well, that is going to go a long, long way. Wow. Error, really, from Curran. He goes for six. It's 47 for two. So he has two fielder, mid wicket and uh, square leg back. And then the batsman gives him the charge. The batsman wanted him to bowl out sort of some, and that's what exactly he did. And he's not very happy with himself. He should have been full, he should have been towards his leg. Well, 
Well, the six overs, the power play complete. Signal made. 47 for two. Uh, not the worst, not the best. Yeah, Tom Curran will reflect on that decision just to bowl that where he did in that last ball of the previous over. I mean, yes, it was a fabulous shot, tremendous shot. But uh, you can deny the batsman the chance to play it, can't you? Like you were mentioning, you can set the field, but you had to, you got to bowl according to the field. He would have followed the batsman full towards middle leg, OK? If you got a hit through fine leg for four, fair enough. At least you're bowling to your field. OK. Benny Hal. Bowling. Brilliant, Benny. Brilliant, Benny. Similar sort of style to Curran, actually, uh, Benny Hal. Yeah, bowlers, <laughs> they always reflect, don't they? Yes, it's good footwork. Yes, it's innovative. It's, yeah, it's clever from the batting end. But, yeah, that shows you exactly what Tom Curran thinks of his own bowling. Pace off. So, Benny Hal straight away, second ball, pace off. Almost an off break in terms of both pace and intention. I think they recovered well. 47 for two in uh, six overs. They lost the second wicket on 15, so good comeback. King is on 20, Grimm is on 13. Right, just push down for one, brings uh, Colin Ingram back on strike and gives us another chance for more. Uh, well, Patrick. Yeah, I just want to look at this graphic here um, to show the bowling options to Colin Ingram. Uh, this is the kind of thing that the, the captains, the coaches, the analysts will be thinking about with their bowling plans. Now, if you look here, from the bowling point of view, it's a good option to go with Sheldon Cottrell and Roa Mustafa to Colin Ingram. But he's managed to get through Cottrell. And he's now facing Curran and Howell, who are bad options based on matchups and data in the past. So this is a little little win for, for Ingram here that he's, he's beginning to face bowlers that he's more comfortable against and that he might be able to flourish against. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Biz Boys. Green here, just to enlarge on that graphic. The green is a good idea. Uh, red is not such a good idea. And Hasaranga, well, why not? <laughs> Somewhere in between. It's the Goldilocks. It's the Goldilocks graphic. And 50 up as well for Knight Riders. Oh, Another slow delivery. In the 6.5 overs, 50 for two. Good recovery so far. They need this partnership to go at least till the 13th, 14th over. And one of them after, say, nine overs or eight overs, King's probably got to go. Should go after the bowling, boundary and over. It looked as though it'd be a bigger shot than it turned out to be. 51 for two after seven. Yeah, I mean, the, the theories remain the same, don't they, around the world in this form of the game. If you have resources in hand as you get through the 20 overs, it gives you just more leeway, more opportunities, you can take more risks. So this actually, in terms of the whole competition, I think, for Knight Riders is a really important partnership. If these two hang together for a little while yet, um, for instance, Ingram, who we know can really play this form of the game really well, makes hundreds. You know, if he can get some form going, that's good for his confidence, good for the confidence of the side. Right, just thinking ahead. Yeah, they'll need that 168 they'll get from nine and over from here on in. So, yes, there's some work to be done. Bowling, one, one! Mustafa for his first over. There's a thought of coming back the second. He doesn't turn the ball, he just bowls full as an off-spinner, Mustafa, Rohan Mustafa. 74 wickets, uh, his T20 career. Good average, 20.30, just under 21. He's bowling to a left-hander. I think, if anything, the ball will come into the left-hander. Oh, 
morning. Now we heard from Patrick in full flow just now with those options. And he's just whispered at me, this was one of the good options. Against Ingram, yes, an off spinner. Two dot ball straight away. Thanks, Patrick. The matchups are so important at this day and age, especially like in this to moment. Be right, you know, these, sorry, I'm whispering. These Viz voices, they like to be right, you know. Yeah, we have Patrick and Richard as our Viz voices uh, throughout this tournament. The, the teams, of course, have teams of people analysing, doing the same sorts of things. Oh, that's, oh, that's pretty ball! straight. That is pretty straight. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant, Maybe if, just outside line. If anything, just outside the line, off stump line. Let's have a look in a replay. But that was a good ball, quick ball, straight one. Yeah, everyone's accepted that, I think. Again, that shuffle across, you can say. Yeah, you can see clearly enough. Oh, that's gone up. That's gone up. It hasn't gone far enough. Tom Curran positions himself absolutely perfectly. Just what uh, Knight Riders didn't want. An important man who just started to get the hang of life out there in uh, Colin Ingram has just started to realise that he's made a slight mess of it. So, like we were discussing, matchup matters. And this was a very good matchup. The off spinner, again, the experience in Grim. He tries to go to extra cover, then middle it straight to the fielder at mid off. And a very important uh, wicket for the Vipers here. So now, Knight Riders under pressure. Colin Ingram to pass for 15. Knight Riders 54 for 3. Knight Riders struggling. Same old story for the Knight Riders, 54 for three. After eight, losing wickets at regular intervals. They really struggled throughout this tournament to date. They need something special. They need their senior players, their star players to stand up. Brandon King has got a start. Well, this has been the news. Mundu Hasaranga flown in yesterday, had a bit of a bowl, a bit of a trundle down the nets, met his new teammates. Here's the ball. What are you? Well, that's a great addition in the team because uh, this man has got some record in this part of the world. He's a true match winner, a wicket taker, and uh, this came, uh, came on at the right time they just lost the wicket previous over and no better person to come on and and squeeze it make it harder for the night riders one gussy one gussy wants a couple well wickets at regular intervals colin ingram he just hasn't got going well this is a DP World, smart delivery by Raham Mustafa. Nicely pouched in the deep by Tom Curran. Just haven't got going. The Knight Riders batters. Good start by Raham Mustafa, the local UAE player. Asalanka on the same flight, sitting together yesterday, seat 1A and seat 1B and opponents today. Oh, Shafane, please type them one, eh? Yeah. Well, Asalanka will uh, read him boy, much Jake. better than anyone else. He 
he will definitely cause issues. There's no much spin there, but it's just the, the way he bowled, the variation in the deliveries. On the reverse. Cottrell reads it well. Very good, Sheldon Cottrell. Colin Ingram. The last wicket. Here's the smart delivery brought to you by DP World, the leading global provider of smart logistics. Catch! Pull away. Pitch looks good. I don't think it's as good as the previous pitch a couple of nights ago where runs seem to be easy to come by, but it looks a decent surface. What have you made of it thus far? I think this is a better pitch. The previous pitch here had a bit more bounce, a bit more swing, a bit more carry. Because this pitch has been used before, as I'm talking about the game before that. So the, the grass on the pitch is a little bit drier, it's, it's browner. So I feel that it'll, it'll play a lot better, but it's just that few rash shots playing across the line. And, and losing wickets, the confidence is not there. Bowling. Oh, Asalanka, happy to watch his fellow countryman from Sri Lanka. Nine overs bowled, 60 for three. With that, it's going to be time for a bit of a chat with the coach, strategic timeout. Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, 60 for three. They are in a world of hurt, nine overs. They're north from two in the comp so far. They need a win. They need to step up soon. Desert Vipers, well, they've been very confident so far. Playing some good cricket, well-run side. This is the last wicket. This is Raham Mustafa. He normally fires the ball in. Just watch this. Fires the ball, flat, flat, flat. Take the pace off it, Ronnie. Colin Ingram gets sucked in. He sees the ball go above the eye line. He said, this is my chance. 
to get one away. Excellent bowling. That could be a contender for the DP World. Smart delivery of the day. We'll wait and see, but excellent so far from Raham Mustafa. They call him Ronnie in these parts. Excellent cricket. It may well open the batting tonight as well later on. Asalanka. Doesn't normally take too long to get into his groove. Benny Hal, keep her up. Sam Billings up to the stumps. Good to see. I like this on Billings because he knows Benny Hal is going to bowl four, maybe five slower balls and over. So he's standing up saying the batter, stay in your crease. Honest, do you want me to attempt? They're not going to give any pace. They're going to ask the batsman to make the pace. The three down, it's going to be hard to sort of go really big. King has played quite nicely so far, but the thing is, he's seeing the other partners coming and going, and, and it's hard for him to get, sort of look for the big shot. Well, that is a big shot, but there is protection. When does it become a slower ball as opposed to him bowling a full pace ball? If he's bowling four slower balls and over, is the change up the fast ball? Well, I think his quickest is 103. And then when he just breaks that pace, it comes down to 90, 95, somewhere there. There you go. In the air. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Easy as you like. Shafane Rutherford, no. That is an absolute, as they say in the industry, a dolly. Yeah, that was, uh, it was just there to be taken. And a little push, gentle push. It didn't have to move an inch. But through the legs, actually, the hands are wide open didn't really even touch the hand oh sounded really really good looks even better what a cracking shot that is that's a contender for the fair play news biggest hit of the day lovely shot it went flat and it went long it might seem 71 meters but he hit it hard he hit it low it was a bullet what a beautiful hit. Strong kid. Very strong kid. 78 meters in all. Yeah, lovely pickup. His bat flow is absolutely beautiful. Good slow mo we got there. Just show the lovely swing of the blade. Can't be one. Can't be one. Well, Benny Hale operating around that 100 Ks. Hey, last one. Rashid Khan average speed, 92 Ks and reliably informed. So actually, not bowling a great deal faster than the great man from Afghanistan. Well, you don't really need to. If, if, if this is working for you, just carry on. And he's been uh, very good going around the world, playing different leagues. He understands the pitch. This pitch probably is the hardest for him to bowl at because the ball skits on. Once the ball starts gripping, he becomes very hard to face. Wants to, Billings is quick, and Billings is too quick. Good over, all the same, for the Knight Riders. 10 done, 71 for three. Just beginning to get a little partnership going, 17 from 12. Trying to assess the two batters in the middle, trying to assess what's a good score, what do we think we can defend? I think they're sitting okay. I mean, 71 for three, they probably lost one extra wicket. If this would have been two down, they would have been a lot happier. But the two batsmen out there in the middle, they're very much capable of putting up a big partnership. And, and if it comes to a situation that they get into the last five over, one of them, they can really take the game from there but this man is a danger man Nasaranga at the back of the hand turning away from the left hander huh? 
Hasselanka eyeing up leg side. Hasaranga knows him inside out. Touch. Eyeing up leg side, plenty of protection. Well, we might be retired, Wakar. We're still ultra competitive, aren't we, though? Talk me through this. You know something we don't. <laughs> I always go with the underdogs. I feel for the night riders and I so far I still I'm still with them. It's not that I've just left them. Pulled away. Feels like we're picking on them a little bit. Ganging up on the night riders. Four to one. Look, I, I like this team. I think they've got plenty to offer. It's just that they haven't started well. And I think this might be their day. Yes, they've lost three wickets. They've still got plenty of time. They've got two really good batsmen out there. He bowling. Get a decent total on the board. And uh, can really trouble the Wipers. The Wipers only played one game so far. So, yes, they've played really well. They won that game. Oh! Sam Billings, you'll see that. You may well see in just the back of the picture the bales falling off. Sam Billings just gave a little boot there. Off to see the keepers get so keen. Ball's coming. Sam Billings, a live wire behind the pegs. Oh, that sounded superb. It looks even better. What a wonderful shot. Another contender for the Fair Play News' biggest hit. He's here to win. 11 overs done. 80 for three. If you asked me that this was a short delivery, no. Maybe just a touch short, but it was just too good a shot. He rocked back. The ball's not going to spin. And he had a fair idea how is he going to tackle this and an excellent hit well he's been a little bit short so far understandable only flew in yesterday just coming off an ODI series against India so just trying to get back into the T20 group Yes, please. That's what Andre Russell's thinking. Two or three more overs of this, fellas, and set me up for the last six. Good from Cottrell. Very good from Cottrell. I like that. The big quick. Anticipated, attacked. Good athlete. Yeah, that was uh, really rushed on and, and grabbed the ball very, very quickly. But the Queen King was even quicker. Very, very well done. Play, try to play late, try to play inside. But good at, look at that. The throw was just maybe stopped in the pitch a little bit. Yeah, just got stuck on the surface a little bit. Just plugged. Brilliant hit down the ground. A great place to hit here at Dubai. One bounce into the pickets. Watch that uh, once again. This is a beauty. Magnificent hit. Free flow off the bat. Yes, it was a little bit full, but look at that. All the power behind it and from the middle of the bat. Went like an arrow, nice and straight. Just landed inside. Oh. Well, it's a bit unlucky from Benny Hal. He'll feel he's hard done by. All of a sudden, just the fortune favouring Brandon King and the Knight Riders. Back to back boundaries. Yeah, into the 12th over, and they're probably feeling it that they're a little bit behind. They have to really push on. And uh, both of them are looking to go big, anything lose. They're, this time around, they were, he was a little lucky. It was unfortunate for uh, the bowler. Yes! Chips it. It's going to be safe. I'm with you, Waka. I think they're well placed. I think they're really well placed here. 
to set themselves up for that last six. Yes, they're both going hard now, and they should be, because they're both set. Partnership's 36. And I think the Knight Riders are in a really good spot here. And their options, after those first couple of wickets, have been good. Good, strong shots. Three big ones. Seven along the carpet. In the gap, excellent, excellent. Really good placement. Asalanka, he's been a good addition to this 11. Well, previously, the, the average score here is around about 160, but these pitches are different. It's coming onto the back nicely, so the so the average score goes for me. I think it's around about 180, 180 plus. They need to get there. To get there, they need to keep playing those shots. This was beauty. Yeah, lovely placement. We know he's got power, but he's also got that precision. Another cutter, another good over. Benny Howell's been expensive. 12 done, 95 for three. Ninety-five for three here in Dubai. The Knight Riders playing nicely. Inserted. Lost a couple early, but since six or seven over mark, they've been very good. It's a good surface. Outfield's quick. Shiraz Ahmed, left arm, very good change-ups. David Gower alongside me, sliding in easily. Yeah, love a bit of Shiraz. Not liking that so much. First ball down the leg side. I'm interested by your feelings that I, mean, I think you're somehow trying to big up the Knight Riders here, give them a chance. I think they've got quite a lot of work to do. I was here the other night when 182 wasn't enough, not for them as such. Good fielding. Right, three wickets down, just to recap on those. First two, very similar, all going way up into the sky. Now, we've seen the odd keeper have the odd fumble in these circumstances, but Sam Billing, absolutely perfect. Very calm, very collected, knows exactly what he's doing with those gloves, makes it look far too easy. And then uh, Colin Ingram slapping it down the ground, didn't get the distance on it. And again, Tom Corran this time in the deep. Very safe pair of hands. Everything in this tournament, of course, all the good stuff is rewarded. Now, the catch of the season, the best catch of the season, gets this awesome bicycle from the Cycle Hub. And once you've won it, it's up to you how you get it home. Looks good, that bike. Just pedal it home. Yeah, it's a nice reward. Pluck a couple out of thin air and get yourself a new bike. Are you a avid cyclist? You get your liker on around the streets of Southampton and Hampshire? I wouldn't overstate it, to be honest, Niall, no. I, I, I do have a very nice little bike at home. Nothing as nice as the one provided there by Cycle Hub. I mean, that one, that Cycle Hub one, it looks very, very special. Sadly, I don't think I'm in the running for this particular one. Unless I've got a spare one. But no, I, I like a bit of cycling. When you get to a certain stage of life, all that running around country lanes, it's overrated. Cycle to the, um, cycle to the nearest inn.
Powerful shot with just the one. Unless there's a misfield, which there isn't from Atkinson. Hunter comes up towards the end of the 13th over. Everything's still pretty much in the balance in this match number seven of this DP World ILT20. Nice timer of the ball, Asalanka. He's found a home straight away on this surface. Put bad ball away, but he's limited dot balls. He's also negotiated a couple of overs of Hasaranga. Sri Lankan versus Sri Lankan. Asalanka took plenty of the strikes, so they've been pretty smart so far. Outside that power play, they've been pretty good in a phase when they've struggled all tournament. The Knight Riders, they've lost four wickets and overs. 7 to 15 in both their previous games. Early move doesn't quite pay off. 101 for 3. Always important, the men out in the middle have to make uh, decisions each and every over, but the key decision from the batting side is to somehow work out as early as possible what is enough, what's, what's going to keep you in the game. Uh, and I'm thinking that 180, it's got to be that initial target, well, I say initial target, it's got to be something of a target. Now, if I'm talking, if we're talking about 180 as a relatively past score, hang on, wake up, wake up, wake up. Might be needed. We're talking about 180 is a relatively fast score. 11 and over it's going to take. Now, the man we saw fast asleep just there, Dre Russell, is potentially part of that sort of story. Hit me, hit These two out there in the middle at the moment are certainly keeping things ticking. Yeah, Hasaranga back into the attack. You're right, he is the main man, Dre Russ. He's had a quiet tournament to date. Doesn't stay quiet for too long, Andre Russell. Well, good footwork, drags it in the end. I think the intention was to come straight and loft it. But in the end, had to drag it just along the ground to long on. Yeah, plenty of intent at the back of the hand again. Googly from Hasaranga. Brandon King trying to go downtown. Well, that's got elevation on it, but it hasn't got distance. The staff for the man, again, the catching, I tell you what, the catching has been made to look incredibly easy. The judgment of the, the pace off the bat, the position of the fielders, whether it's Billings, Curran or now Mustafa, has been perfect every time. Very easy catch. Well, Battle of Sri Lanka won by Hasaranga. You knew Asalanka was going to take him on. Doesn't get it out of the screws. Ronnie Mustafa's a very, very accomplished fielder, and Hasaranga says, dial home, you're gone. Back to Colombo for you. Hasaranka played nicely. Gone, though. Well played, 26. 103 for four. three four rights so much talk about uh, Andre Russell and his importance to this side the Knight Riders 
fortunes or lack of. Well, he hasn't fired completely so far in this tournament, but he's shown signs that he might. So will tonight be the night? Well, he's not hanging around, is he? He's certainly not waiting. And it's not working. It has not worked. Disaster for Knight Riders, disaster for Russell. Where the power's gone, who knows? But he didn't get enough of that to clear the boundary. And his stay is the shortest possible. Well, you've got to ask yourself, is this the smart option? And I'll tell you the answer, no. First ball. All tournament, Andre Russell has cried out for a platform. Tonight, he gets the platform and he hands it back to Hasaranga and Co. Nicely pouched by Tom Curran in the deep. Andre Russell is gone. First ball, duck. Knight Riders in trouble. 103 for five. Now, we've had a few opportunities in this ILT20 for hat-tricks. As far as I'm aware, none have come off so far. Sunil Narayan, captain, on a hat-trick from uh, Hasaranga, potentially. Slippers in place. I've seen worse attempts at a hat-trick, that's for sure. Dead straight. Batsman, obviously, Narayan having to play. Bat and pad very close together. Hat-trick averted. Here we go again, though. Studious. Just got to make sure the run is complete. 15 overs done. 14 overs done, rather. 104 for five. Doesn't say much, Sun in Orion, it seems. A man who likes to make his thoughts simply and shortly known, but I'd love to know what he said to his team at the start of the day. They've had two poor games with the bat. They've had nothing to work with in the field. And I'm afraid it looks at the moment as though that's the story again. When you lose Russell for none like that, it's not good news. So not enough has changed for the Knight Riders in terms of their batting performance. Brandon King is the honourable exception tonight. 45 not out from 33. That's played very nicely indeed. There was a little bit of promise elsewhere, but nothing of substance, it seems. So he has to play the lone hand. Ryan has to do what he can. Then you're down into the tail. Viper's looking incredibly sharp in the field. Ooh, inside edge. <laughs> Hands on head to tell the story as far as Tom Curran's concerned. Well, back to back wickets for Wanindu Hasaranga. This is his fellow countryman. Asalanka trying to go big and played him well to date. Nicely caught the deep and then Dre Ross first ball well. As captain and coach you say, yes, you've got power, but surely you can have a look. That's why he is rated as highly as he is. Top class. Straight to the man, otherwise that was the runs they need, four of them, but uh, straight to him, so keeps it down to zero. The only thing Joe Russ can say is he picked it. But I'm afraid that scores you one out of ten. <laughs> ah. 
reasonably powerfully struck. Got to the man quickly enough, but no thoughts of two. Well, yesterday evening, Kyron Pollard patted back five dots in a row, walked out a different stage in the chase, and they were commanding the game, but he walked out and patted five balls back off a spinner. And blocked out a wicked maiden. Then hit a six. So, Kyron Pollard said last night, yeah, OK, decent ball, decent ball, pat it back, let me get used to conditions. And then he knew he had the power. Andre Russell walks out. We saw him a minute or two before he went about, a towel over his waist, eyes closed. And then we walk out, you try and hit one over the ropes, first ball. Just doesn't quite add up for me. Now that's got the gap, it's found the gap almost. Didn't have quite enough on it to beat Hales in the deep. This is what tends to happen when a side in the field has earned control. Even the better shots don't find the gaps well enough to get the boundaries. And if Knight Riders are to have any chance here, you just feel as though they need someone to find the boundary on a regular basis in the last five overs, the last five starting after this delivery. And the change of pace, you've got those two men behind on the offside, so no way through. 107 for five. Coaching night riders. You'll probably be fuming in a corner somewhere at the moment. Quietly sort of muttering to yourself because 107 for five, who do you want at the crease? You, okay. <laughs> Anyone who can hit the ball, who's your best man at hitting the ball a distance? Andre Russell. Just a couple of balls reconnaissance would have made all the difference. Well, uh, Sports Buzz 11, top fantasy picks of the match. Now Ryan is in now, so he's looking to score you points. Have you got Alex Hales? He's in form. Later on, we'll see him wield the willow. Sam Billings is going nicely behind the sticks. Always good to have a keeper in your fantasy pick. Catches, stumpings, runs. Always good to have a keeper in real life as well. <laughs> well, I tell you, some teams this tournament play without a keeper sometimes. <laughs> Up it goes. Now, every time they've gone up and over, it hasn't gone over. It is, it seems, the easiest thing for this man, Hasaranga, just to tempt people into trying to go up and to fool them into just presenting yet another simple catch. Well, Hasaranga had two overs for 15. He's now got three for 18 or 3.1. Wrist spinner against mystery spinner, and Orion says, I'm going to take him on. Alex Hales catches it with consummate ease. Good field, Alex Hales is safely pouched. And Orion, the skipper, has got to go for three. 107 for six. And Rod Tucker will just signal the time for the strategic timeout.
Right, nearly out of the uh, timeouts. I can tell you the player's actually been ready for about 30 seconds. As far as Vipers are concerned, everything's going well. As far as uh, Abu Dhabi Knight Riders are concerned, what can you say in three minutes that compensates the fact your batting has been woeful? Oh! That's well ball. This man, Hasarang, has come in for his first game, flown in. First game has had an immediate impact, hasn't he? Akil Hussain might have a well, we'll have a part to play in the second part of the game. Spin is obviously key tonight. Oh, Beautifully right. bowled. Oh, it's lovely to watch. Yeah, googly at the back of the hand. Turning away from the left-hander, Billings reads it. Sam Billings wouldn't have played with Wunindu Hasaranga a great deal, if any. Lovely googly. Akil Hussain, not sure which way the ball's turning. Oh, that's done. And normally when you, done the batter doesn't know which way the ball's turning, you go to the sweep. I think he's just <laughs> hanging in there. Well, for many, many years when playing Rashid Khan, teams around the world said, he's the best in the world, Rashid Khan, given four overs number 20, and we'll take our runs elsewhere. Similar situation you could take against Hasaranga. Four overs, none for 20, you're happy. They've gifted him three. They've gifted him wickets, caught in the deep. They've made his job so much easier. No run there either. Well, great spell from Hasaranga. Three for 18 from his four, it's 107 for six. Unfortunately, from an Abu Dhabi Knight Riders' point of view, they just haven't learned the lessons tonight. We've seen so many batters going in similar fashion, and that man, Hasaranga, what he's added to the side. A touch of magic. They really look a good side. And he's they really do. That leaves a senseless batting, I must say, from Andre Russell. I can imagine he loves his game. You've got to go with the but have a look, see the situation, and then the skipper. 107 for six, they're struggling now. And great performance uh, by the Vipers. They, they, they took control of the game. One partnership is going, and they got one wicket of Asa Lanka, and then they lost two, three wickets in a... Three wickets for him. That was the first one. Three for 18 in his four. Everybody was playing cross the spin, and this was the first ball faced by Russell. Went straight to Medon, and what a catch by Curran. And that was uh, the skipper. Playing a senseless shot. Been gone. Yeah, no wonder he's one of the best bowlers in world cricket in this format. Hasaranga, look at the length, 67%. Good length of back of a length. Hardly anything wide, hardly anything short. So consistency. Oh, it's beautiful. They've been good all the way through. Bowlers have backed each other up as well. We had a, a tone set by the opening bowlers. They were absolutely brilliant early on. They had found some swing. They found a bit of bounce. And they used it beautifully. And when you've got opening bowlers doing that kind of job, doing a bit of damage early on, like Atkinson did with Cottrell as well, then you come in as a spinner after that and you think, all right, 
This is perfect for me. Batter's under pressure. You can just do what you normally do. It's a good pitch. There's no demon in this pitch at all. Good batting tech. Obviously, new ball swung a bit for two, three overs. But ball was coming nicely on the bat. But like I said, just every short selection by the players, by the batters, night riders. The pressure is on them. They lost two already in this competition. This is the third one. Is it too almost simplistic to say that it's just a lack of confidence for the, the night riders? Or oh, sense, <laughs> maybe. But confidence I understand, but when things are not going right, you should have wickets in hand, make sure your main man like Andre Russell should come in 16th or 17th over, then he'll be dangerous. But he has to bat for 6-7 overs, then he's always in two minds. Okay, by the block, either hit, and yeah, they got to learn quickly, otherwise they're going to stay way behind in this tournament. Hasn't been a lot that's gone wrong for the Desert Vipers tonight. So to rebowl that, yeah, this the games in franchise cricket just comes so quickly, doesn't it? It's hard to recover, and in particular for the Night Riders with their net run rate as it stands at the moment, it's not looking good. And the way this game is shaping up, it's not going to do the net run rate too many favours. played well, not his fault, King. He's on uh, 47 or 37. Every time he tries to, or oh, hits a boundary, wicket fell from the other side. So obviously pressure on him. Look at this, 7 to 15. Run rate was only 6.67 and the lost wickets as well with regular intervals. Yeah, the boundary's not coming. Uh, run rates is going nowhere. It's absolutely stalled. 110 for six. Three overs to go. Now, we've spoken about this so many times through the competition. The teams have been looking to capitalize in the last few overs when they've got wickets in hand, of course, and some kind of platform. Fortunately for the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, they, they have neither right now. But three overs, you never know what might happen. You got a, a, a few boundaries, get a little bit of, of luck on your side. You never know. Yeah, 10 and over will take them to 140, and I don't think so. That's good enough on this pitch. 12 and over to 146. One set batsman in. Akil is there as well, who just walked out. He's one of 10. What is he playing? From a Desert Vipers point of view, though, they really look good, don't they? So, I mean, we haven't seen a lot of them yet. This is only their second game, and it's obviously we haven't seen them with a bat on the surface, but they look good. The squad looked good when we saw early on before the tournament in this uh, DP World ILT20. Ryan Tendashkate is a bowling coach for Knight Riders. Fine leg up, third man up, mid on, mid off back. A lot of variations. One bounce straight to the fielder. Single's not going to cut it, guys. Just looking at the, the Knight Riders. Look at that net run rate. Obviously, <laughs> the points is also an issue. You need to get some wins. Never mind the net run rate, really. But it will come into play a bit later on. So, got to be looking at that as well.
don't want to fall behind so early, obviously. And from a, a fixtures point of view and sort of what they would be planning for as well, they'll also have to keep in mind where they're going from here. I do understand that every team is playing 10 games with all, b b before the eliminators, but uh, when you, you know, top, bottom of the ladder and you run it is three point, minus three something, and then you have no points. It will be struggle to reach, to qualify for the first four, but anything can happen. They're going to come back for two. He's going to hurry up. Oh, gosh, 50 for King. He played well for his team. He's the lone survivor. 50 of 39. A superb effort. You would have seen wickets falling all around him and, and probably feeling a bit frustrated with the batters at the other end and, and the shot selection. But actually, he's played brilliantly. Just, just managing to keep this together. But he needs some help from the other end. If they are going to find the boundary right now, it's about boundaries. Desert Vipers will be very happy with this. They don't need to worry about the, the singles. And they know that if they get a win here tonight, the Vipers, and... They will face the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders again in the next fixture in Abu Dhabi. So they would have some confidence going into that fixture as well. Into the surface. But not effective on this occasion. It's effective for the Knight Riders. Just what's required. 122 for six. Yeah, not a great delivery. They got the maximum, Makilo San. Last ball, 18th over, just go full outside off stump. Why take a risk with a short delivery? Last over 12 runs, the best over so far. Had a six in the previous over to end it off. And it's the first boundary since the 12th over, which tells you the story, obviously from the Knight Riders' point of view, but also how well the Desert Vipers have bowled. They've fielded well too. Captain has been excellent. Now, current with his last over, he's gone for just 15 runs so far in his three overs. He's got fine leg up, he's got square. Third man up in the circle, and so is Midoff. He's up in the circle, so let's see where he bowls. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from King. A little bit of use of the feet, and manipulating the ball straight. Boundary on the first ball. And what a shot from King. He's on 55 now. Let's have a look. Couple of steps, made it into a half volley and played it straight as an arrow. It's a good cricketing shot, no slog. Just had to compensate a little bit after that previous shot and a direct hit would have seen the end of his innings. A little bit of luck going the way of the Knight Riders now. Yeah, they need a bit of luck, I suppose, at this stage of the game. Good spells by bowlers. Cottrell, 2 for 12. 3 overs, 12 for 1. Atkinson, 3 overs, 31 for 3. Bit expensive. Curran, into his fourth over, considered only 20 runs. And then, of course, Hasaranga, the man of the moment. One of the best bowlers in this format in the world cricket. 18 for 3 in his fourth. I'll tell you what, there has been one bright spark for the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders tonight and something to smile about because King has been superb. He'll be very happy with his efforts. He knows, obviously, there's still some responsibility on his shoulders, but what an innings this has been. Five fours, two sixes to his name. 
He's made it look like he's actually batting on a different surface compared to the rest of his team. It's a good surface to bat on. And uh, at this stage of the game, I can imagine the need boundaries, but his two dot balls by Akil. Just take a single, give the strike to a set batsman. It's not a rocket science. It's easy to overcomplicate things sometimes, isn't it? You know, I understand. I'm all for analysis. I'm all for, you know, really going in depth to the game and looking back on what you've done and, you know, your mistakes and what you can correct. But sometimes you can forget the simplest things. That's what he's aiming for. He's aiming for the boundary straight. But all he's done is got himself a single. There's some fans enjoying the luxury of the DP World Smart View. What a place to watch the action from. To get a taste of this fantastic tournament as well. Uh, a place to watch uh, the action. And if you're supporting the Desert Vipers, it'll be even more comfortable. A little bit of improvisation. That's been a really good passage of play right throughout for the Desert Vipers. They are giving nothing away. 129 for six. Right, one over to go. Uh, 129 on the board. And I can tell has been so good throughout today. We'll finish things off. It's his birthday tomorrow. Uh, birthday present for him so far. Last over, 31 for one for Atkinson so far. Brilliant, on target. Simple cliche, you miss, I hit. But what a fantastic innings from King. Really is under the circumstances, the, the, the whole batting was all over the place. And this again wasn't a great source selection. I can imagine it was the last over. But go straight, you have been consistent. You got 50 playing straight over Madon or Madoff. But this, this occasion, he went across the line, missed the ball and got pulled. He departs for 57, good innings. Kick in Knight Riders, now 129 for 7. Matu Lacan walks to the crease. Into a tough situation again for him. It's his second match of the tournament. Well, depends on Akil Sen. He's on 10 of 16. And this was a set batsman. Cross seam, straight delivery. And he missed it. He was going towards mid wicket or square leg. Cross bat. Go straight. It was right in the zone for a straight hit. But good bowling. He's got his second wicket. In a chat with his senior uh, bowler, Atkinson. Probably he's uh, Karan is telling him not to bowl short at him. That's what he's looking to hit towards Madon and mid wicket. 
good bat on it, but just not finding the, the gaps at the moment. They found the fielders regularly over the last eight or nine overs. And that's uh, one got to do with obviously shot selection at times, but also just generally the Vipers, how good they've been with the bowling and also field placement. They've got good support as well. That's great to see. Now for Matthew Lahan, he's got third man back. Mid off up in the circle, fine leg up in the circle. Let's see where he bowls. Variation or full? Length. Yeah, there is no risk. You can bowl length to the tail ender, number nine batter. 132 now, two balls to go. They need a boundary. A couple of boundaries maybe help them. At least some respectable total. Interesting to watch the teams in action in, in, in the tournament, and it often happens in franchise cricket for me, is that some teams click together and some teams just don't. It's, they're all given a pretty much the same preparation time. There's one or two teams that just haven't clicked. We saw the Sharjah Warriors in action yesterday, and it just hasn't come together for them, both with bat and ball. And then you see the Desert Vipers, for example. It's all come together. Well, the Giants have been superb as well. Before the tournament, when I saw the scores, the Vipers looks the strongest. They kind of covered every base as far as the batter is concerned, their all-rounder is concerned, their fast bowler is concerned. And of course, uh, this man is behind uh, uh, Dennis Viper, the cricket director. Great man, Tom Moody. Nice have finished off in the end. They will take the risk. It's worth taking it. Unfortunately, the run won't count because he's run out in the end. Just a well-oiled machine they are right now. They are looking so good, the Desert Vipers. What a superb performance with the ball. Everybody putting their hand up and playing their role perfectly. And the captain as well leading perfectly tonight. Unfortunately for the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, this is pretty much the story of the night, really just about tells you in one ball not going right at all they look a bit lethargic with the bat early on I can understand only one guy looked good King he's got 50 otherwise they were all over the place there was no planning and on the other hand like you said Natalie that uh, wipers they look controlled their bowling coach Azad Mahmood will be very happy with the performance and uh, look at the man of the moment Hasaranga three wickets in the mid-overs, under pressure, top wickets of Andre Russell, Sunil Narayan, and uh, Asalanka. He led his troops well, Colin Munro. Well, they certainly have a lot to smile about. That is for sure. It was the Desert Vipers who won the toss. They chose to have a bowl first because they said they weren't sure what the surface might do. Well, I don't think the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders still know what the surface is doing, really, because unfortunately they just had no answers. The only batter that stood up was King. He was brilliant. That's an excellent 57. It really stands out because of the, the rest of the batters struggling so much. It was a good wicket to bat on. Like I said, there was no demon in the pitch. Cottrell, three overs, one wicket. Atkinson. Four for two in his uh, and it's considered 35 runs and of course the uh, pick up pick up the bowlers Hasaranga 18 for three so 133 on the board in the end the bowlers were absolutely brilliant let's go down now onto the field with David Gower hey, I've got Selden with me Selden Cottrell that was a, a very fine performance in the field he must be delighted with the way it's gone so far um yeah most definitely I think we we're playing as a team Mm -hmm. We're playing as one unit. I mean, in the field, we were great. All the bowlers did well. Um, Asaranga just came in for his first game, and he did extremely well. I think it was a well-rounded feeling performance from us. Yeah, I'm going to say, for a man who's just arrived off the plane, <laughs> he's slotted straight in, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I mean, the, t the team has gelled, has gelled, and he came in and, and just um, gelled with the family. He fits. He fits really well. Catching was good. Everything got caught. 
um, except from one, Sheffield North. Well, let's not worry about that. Let's not worry about that. <laughs> but I mean, generally, we're, we're, we're a good feeling unit. We take pride in the field. Um, mm. Colin Monroe, I mean, our captain, drill us, so we take pride in the field. Now, you've got the new ball. Um, how are these balls? Tell us something about the balls you're using in this tournament. Honestly, I, I love it. <laughs> you love it? Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think it swings more than the, the, the normal ball. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it, all, When I'm bowling, all I want to do is just pitch it right up and, and let the ball swing some more, so I love it. And you got the saluting as well? Yeah, most definitely. I love taking wickets because I love saluting. Uh, sorry, <laughs> what rank are you holding now? Remind me what rank you are. Uh, I'm a private. <laughs> private. Well done. Thank you. I salute you. <laughs> Well done indeed to Sheldon Cottrell. Absolutely brilliant with the ball. There's no doubt that they should be very happy with that equation, needing 134 off 120. It'll be interesting to see what happens in this fixture. Desert Vipers currently on top. And gone. Well, it certainly hasn't been the night that the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders would have wished for after what has been a poor start for them. They put up 133 in their 20 overs. Obviously, the shining light is king at the top. Opening again, he would have been happy with that. And a brilliant 57 from him just, just about held things together. 
Unfortunately, we're expecting that won't be enough. And uh, number two bowler in this format in the world cricket, Hasuranga, got three wickets. And that too, of the big guns like Andre Russell. That was his first ball against one of the best spinners in world cricket, straight to Madon. And this was the skipper of Knight Riders playing cross line, edged straight to Madoff, Madon, and got three for 18. What a spell from the great man. Bowlers were brilliant. They all backed each other up. There was a wonderful tone set by the opening bowlers as well. And then you can see Hasaranga standing out with a three for 18 in his four overs. Absolutely brilliant. Now, it wasn't long ago that uh, Rishapan sadly was in quite a serious accident, but he has fortunately gone through quite a bit of rehabilitation. He's received plenty messages of support, and he has received a few more from his teammates and colleagues. Well, Sheldon Cottrell and his Desert Vipers have been pretty good so far. Brandon King with the bat played nicely for a really good half century. Hasaranka in off the plane played nicely, but Hasaranka, all about Wanindu Hasaranka, the magician from Sri Lanka.
Match seven here in Dubai. The ring of fire, they call it. Well, didn't get too many fireworks in the first innings apart from Brandon King. Vipers looking for a second win. They're chasing 134 against the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders who are desperate for a win. They need those two points. Solana Ryan, the skipper, giving some words of wisdom. Andre Russell, well, he got the platform he's been crying out for all tournament. Unfortunately, with the bat in hand tonight, it was straight down Long On's throat first ball. Bowlers are going to have to bail the batters out today in Dubai if the Knight Riders to get their campaign up and running. Captain's been good with the ball so far, and Alex Hales on the right. And Rohan Mustafa, the local player from the UE, left hand, right hand combination. I've got a good lefty alongside me. Was he record? What do the bowlers need to do to bail the batters out? It's a good pitch to bat on. We have seen there was no demons in there. New ball will swing a bit, but again, <clears throat> they'll be bullying as one of the best in the business. Alex Hales, who is in tremendous nick. And for Knight Riders, I think they obviously uh, they need a couple of quick wickets and then they can put pressure on. If not, I think uh, it will be game over for these guys. But at least they have some runs to defend now. Yeah, Rahan Mustafa, good to see the local player, Rahan Mustafa, get an opportunity up top, backing the local players. He's a good cricketer, he's been around a long time, he's useful with the ball, he can improvise with bat, he's electric in the field. Really popular member, not just the UEE side, but on the associate circuit, very popular around the associate game. Alex Hales, well, when he's not smashing them out of the ground, he's playing golf. He, sometimes, he's telling me this morning, this afternoon, one of these days I'm playing that much cricket and golf, I'm going to walk to the crease with the wrong club. Look at his record, look at the strike rate, 147. Over 10,000 runs, what a player he has been. <laughs> Kumara, 58 wickets, average... 23.74, 4 for 17, his career best, slip in place for him. Pace, straight away, he's got pace. Lahira Kumara in from Sri Lanka. And they haven't had that the first couple of games tonight, Rise. They haven't had much pace, they've had swing. Ravi Rampal has swung at it, but he's been a bit expensive. Ali Khan hasn't got going. So this is a big plus, I think, Kumara into the... They could have went pace heavy, they could have had Marsha and Delanger as well. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering, I was asking Marsha, how come they haven't played? He said, I don't know, I'm ready. I would have played him straight away. He's got pace at least. he probably give you early breakthroughs, especially if your uh, target is so low. Good heat. Good heat. Three to the keeper. Give me a bit of his voice. Yeah, just uh, got some keys to success for the Desert Vipers batting. Um, I think with, when you look at this Knight Riders bowling lineup, the strength is in the spinners with Hussain and Narayan. They've got Dan and Jai de Silva as well now. So you want to attack the seamers. And then the other key thing is to keep that left hand, right hand combination. They've got a nice spread throughout the throughout the order so they can be flexible, sh shuffle people up and down. And yeah, they want to keep that variety in their, in their batting lineup. Fantastic as always, great man. Appreciate that. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. It was full and straight, and then there's a knee-high full toss. Even caught Alex Hales by surprise. You got pace, you're right, you were right. Last delivery, previous delivery, almost 145 kilometers an hour. He's bowling full to start off with. Look at this, the uh, consistency of the pace from Lahiru Kumara. And Desert Vipers, they're not in a rush. They're only chasing uh, 130, 134. Well, Rahman Mustafa, first ball he came out and squeezed one down to deep third, broke his bat. Sent his bat off, broke the toe of the bat. You want to carry a lot of bats around these days. They don't last that long anymore. There it is, gone. Have a look. Toe gone. Get the glue out. Normally the ground staff can fix your bats. Get the glue, get the extra strong tape. They still use glue this day and age? Really? I thought they have so many new bats now, they don't have to. <laughs> Not like our days. Straight up in the air, pace, we spoke about pace. Settling, settling, down! Well, 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 you got to take everything. Matthew Khan, the local quick, you got to grab every half chance. 
It was a difficult one, but an half chance, that's for sure. It was a good bouncer, followed the batsman, plan was there, and it worked, almost worked, followed him, and top edge. But Matiullah Khan, being inexperienced, new to this stage, uh, he missed it. Right at the last minute, he just slowed himself up. Should have taken it. Oh, ho, 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 yes, please. Absolutely smashed through the offside. Skyexchange.net, super four for Hamastapa. First half a bold, eight without loss. Look at this shot, gave himself room and bam! Over point fielder, rest the way to the boundary. Looked pretty that shot, really did. Good start here for the Vipers. In a small chase, you want to get a good start, make a good dint in the power play. Sabarali into the attack tonight. Just the three games in his T20 career, so early days. How big stage is uh, this for UAE players? He's a left arm bowler. I haven't seen him, but uh, like I said, it's a big stage for this guy. This will improve their game immensely. Nice start, nice start, just angle, no real swing, you're always looking for swing, just angles across, sometimes it can yeah. be even more uh, problematic for the batter. Yeah, it can happen sometimes, you try to go outside off stump and your wrist actually moves more than it should and it goes across. If you don't know as a bowler, how can batsmen know? <laughs> Is that how you got your million wickets? Once in a while maybe, <laughs> not all the time. <laughs> No, you can't bowl there, not Alex Hales. You just cannot do it. A medium, medium pace, that's all it is. 125 Ks, Alex Hales bashes bowlers a lot faster than that. Short, leg side, easy. Rather bowl slightly fuller against uh, Alex Hales early on than this pace, with this pace than with this kind of length. Every time you bowl him here, doesn't matter how quick you are, he will hit you. Behind square, in front of square, towards fine leg. Slip in play. On the charge. Bowler's end, half chance. Hales had to get his skates on. But straight away, you see the experience of Hales saying, I'm going to get after the youngster, or the debutante, because he's under pressure, he's nervous. Get on top of him early. And Hales expected that the first ball he hit, there was a shot, and now the bowler will bowl full. And hence, he gave, a charge, gave it a charge and missed it inside that should find leg, got a run though. Well, I think Sun on the Rhine might need to bowl early tonight. We've seen him hold himself back so far in the tournament. I think tonight he may need to bowl the power play. Slip out. This time, Raham Mustafa on the charge. A thick outside edge, four runs. Gets away from Akil Hussain down in the deep. All going the way of the Vipers. Not having a good day, Akil. Busy. He should have been stopped. He reached. He was there, almost there, and then he missed it. And they take they taking the slip out, and the ball goes towards the slip. This is what happens. The only way Knight Riders can put pressure or win the game is to get wickets early on. And I'm with you that Sunil Narayan should bowl in first uh, power play. This is what Rohan Mustafa is there to do. His coach has just said, go out and put bat to ball. If you lose your wicket early, we've got plenty of batting. We're chasing a small score. Get 20 off 10. That's a good job. He's 11 off 5 at the moment. The groans, the anguish. I tell you, he's nearly lost another bat there, Rohan Mustafa. He needs to stop using the toe of the bat. And I think that's a learning curve, curve for this UAE players, that especially at this uh, stage, Mustafa. Just keep your balance, keep your head still. You can play your shots. You don't have to play short on every delivery. Hit him out of the park. Sometimes you time the shot. So now third man is up in the circle. 
The point fielder is back on the boundary. Slapped, slapped straight back past. The quick bowler is going to tickle away for another boundary. Well, it's raining fours here at the Ring of Fire. Two done, 21 without loss. It's a happy camp, and why not? Good win first up. And then they bring Hasaranga into the squad as a Mahmoud bowling coach. Highly experienced as a Mahmoud. Very, very well regarded on the circuit. Kumara to continue with his pace. Hale says, give me pace. Let me hit you over extra. What a beauty from Alex Hales. It's another Fair Play News biggest hit contender. He's playing to win. Unbelievable shot against this pace. 143 kilometers an hour. Gave himself room. He bowled full right in his area, in his zone. Opened the face of the bat over extra cover for the maximum. 83 meters the distance. <laughs> wow, slower ball. I think he may have scratched it. I think he may have got a little inside edge. Rod Tucker thinks maybe sliding down leg. Didn't seem it was that convincing an appeal, especially behind the stumps by Ken R. Lewis. Yeah, he's not bothered, I think, behind the stumps. <laughs> Let's have a look. With a slow ball, good variation, back of a hand. And I think going down leg as well. Yeah, going down leg big time. Good change of though, well disguised. Yeah, thick outside edge, racing down to deep third. Mathieu Lacan does well. Nice, strong action. Kumara, big, strong boy. He uses all his body. This is the slower ball. Good change, it's hard to pick up. Just sliding down leg, I think. Rod Tucker. Highly experienced umpire, seen it all before. Change of angle around the wicket. Oh, 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 Rohan Mustafa! Loves it through and over the offside. That's his area, that's his strength. Outside off stump, bang, bang, every time. And he whacked it. 11 runs from the over. Let's have a look. Look at this. There we go. Don't ball him there. Nobody tried him a short delivery as yet. Well, a very good description. He whacked it. He did. He absolutely thumped it. Gave himself a bit of width and just flays it over the offside. Really good start here. Deep in the crease, staying leg side, giving the bowler a stumps. Well, plenty of awards up for grabs at the end of this first season. Some great belts up for grabs. And the green belt, most runs. James Vince at the moment, top of the log. Robbie Utapas played superbly. Well, nice to see Mohamed Wasim. The local boy and Alex Hale, hot on the heels of James Vince. Less comfortable there. How he's got it to long on, I will never know. Beaten for pace, almost a splice of the bat, and another boundary. Three done, 36 without loss. Oh, really good over, Raham Mustafa. Putting back to ball, some beauties through the offside. That's a little less conventional, we shall say. 
really good start. Doing exactly what the captain and coach want. Go out and throw a bat to ball. Don't worry about your wicket. Got Colin Monroe and Billings to come. Get us off to a flyer. 15 runs from the last over. 36 for none in three, chasing 134. Now they need only 98 with 10 wickets in hand. Looks like a one horse race this game. Well, pace hasn't worked. Pace on the ball has been smoked to all parts. It was, spin was utilized nicely in the first innings. Keeper's got his helmet on, so we've got a bit of a change attack, change of ploy. Akhil Hussain, who had some success here in the 2021 T20 World Cup for the West Indies, took a great caught and bowled. Bowling from the other end, but how he come, is a useful bowler. How come the skipper himself is not bowling? Because they need wickets. Other team is cruising towards victory. Oh, clippage, clippage. Get back for a couple. So beautiful boundaries in the last over. Have a look at this one, Wazim. Just talk me through this. Have a look at the bat. Have a look. Double touch. Wow. He was going towards mid-wicket, but obviously the pace did the trick. They got the boundary. In the end, he's on 23 of only 10 deliveries. Something When he hit it, something just didn't look right. And now I know why. Ronnie the Magician, they call him in these parts. He's a prankster. He's a cheeky character. Brilliant. He's seen it so well. He's able to hit it from the splice onto the middle, down the ground. I'd never seen anything like this before. I've been uh, broadcasting for almost 18 years. This is unbelievable scenes here from uh, Dubai International Stadium. So now Madon, Madoff up in the circle. Got square leg back and a mid wicket back. Likes the reverse sweep. Straight up in the air. Lahiru Kumar underneath there, pouches safely. Almost a look of thankfulness. Akhil saying gets the first breakthrough. They got the breakthrough, a danger man. Most of our departs on. And obviously he didn't wait for it, he was going after every delivery. Got the top edge. He bowled well, he had one man back, and that was just a normal swing delivery. It wasn't the left arm spinner, the spin delivery, so that's hence the edge. And good catch by Lahiru. That uh, short, fine leg. Yeah, did his job though, Mustafa. Really good up top. 23 from 11. Vipers going well. 39 for one. Breakthrough for Akil Hussain. Slip in play. Captain Colin Munro. We'll have played a bit of cricket with each other in the Caribbean. Another dangerous player, Munro, the skipper from the Vipers. Batting at number three here today. He's not going to block much, many. Well, he loves Improvisation, just tucks that leg side. Should just be a single. This is the end of Ronnie Mustafa. Just gets himself a little bit tangled, a little bit too tight. It's an arm ball. So clever from Akil Hussain. It was neither a sweep nor a pull. I'm not sure about that. 40, 40 for one off, 3.5. I think the Vipers are pretty happy. 
little bit of turn. Good start from Akil Hussain, picks up the wicket. Four done, 41 for one. One. We'll try something different now, the W Knight Riders. We're talking a little bit about who still the Ryan is and when he's going to bowl. Well, it's going to be Dre Russ that's going to come into the attack now. What can he do with the ball? Sadly, didn't do a lot with the bats, I'm afraid. They were hoping for a lot from him with the bat. They needed a lot from him with the bat. Not tonight. Will he do it with the ball? This is uh, certainly a contender for the DP World Smart Delivery. And it's brought to you by DP World. It's the leader in enabling the flow of trade across the globe. Little chip in the air. A little teaser as well, and it's down. It sums up the campaign at the moment for the Knight Riders. They are just devoid of confidence. I think they've dropped the game. They needed wickets. And this wasn't the most difficult catch. It was easy, he had ample time to move back. No timing on that. Alex Hales wanted to go onside, just got the leading edge, easiest of the catches and couldn't really hold on to that. Went through the hands, onto the stomach. And down she goes. Get a second grab at it. Dre Russ gets a second chance at a wicket in the over. And it's pouched. Nicely done by De Silva, who's a very good field in that area. Well, Russell might have not done with the bat tonight, but he's doing really well with the ball. A drop catch. Previous delivery at this time, Mundra wanted to go hard and straight to the man. This time made no mistake. The ninja was the man. Very safe hand. Mundra gone for one is 42 for two. Obviously, the W Knight Riders need something special. The required run rate is under six to the over. They need wickets. They've managed to pick up two, so it means Sam Billings walks to the crease. Had a decent night behind the stumps tonight. A couple of opportunities that went his way, and he pouched them all. There's definitely movement with this new ball. I don't think the ball was there to be driven. It was just a little short. That's the reason why the ball went in the air. And the ninja was just there, cover point, comfortable. Can they pick up another wicket here? Can they just create some doubt? Oh, that was close. That was very close. I thought they're appealing for LBW or is caught behind. He definitely had something on the, on the ball. Yeah, there was definitely a noise. 
one of the reasons, obviously, why they were interested. I what that's come off. No! Nicely bold. So really good over from Dre Rust is causing just a couple of problems. Five gone, 43 for two. Good to see him running in and looking to ball quickly. When he's on song, he bought some serious heat. And there was something on the ball, but I have a feeling it might be just the just the leg, the ball brushing the leg on the way to the keeper. What an excellent start for Russ. What a beautiful over. Created a couple of opportunities. One was dropped and the next one comfortably taken by the ninja. A little bit of magic here, Joe Russ. Brought into the attack of obviously an important time when they desperately need wickets. There was a little appeal coming from Bowler. Keeper was interested as well. This will tell you the story. If they went upstairs, they would have lost the review. That is just brilliant. Top quality from Hales. He is in superb form. One of the best players when you talk about white ball cricket. That's in my mind. That's what I believe. Over the years, he's shown it again and again. Manages on any sort of surface. A very simple technique. The initial movement is to look to hit the ball. That's the field set for him. The square leg right on the boundary, mid on. The long on is on the boundary. Oh, Akil! You cannot be predictable against this man. You have to really keep on trying different lengths because once you get used to the pace of the pitch, he can really hurt you. That's very, very good bowling. The sand might have gone for four in the early part of the over, but he has pulled it back nicely. Yeah, and you look at the last two overs. And it's just changed just a little bit. Run rate required is bumped up a bit. Oh, it's subtle changes, but it can make a difference. It ends the power play. 48 for two. Well, that makes for very interesting reading. Obviously, the Knight Riders didn't have the finish they wanted, but who knows? The Knight Riders bowl well. You never know what might happen here. And already they just, just created a bit of pressure. 12 runs in the last three overs. Too much risk in the shot. There's such big open areas on this ground. When you look at the total, you think it should be walk in the park for the wipers, but uh, if KK they can uh, keep on picking up wickets and and just pull those dot deliveries like that, that's a good delivery. 
Well, Z Entertainment and Sunset Ivan are bringing you this fantastic tournament, the DP World ILT20. A lot of innovations, a lot of difference, a league apart for so many reasons. One being we bring it to you in English, Hindi and Tamil. It's also going all around the world. We've got some interesting innovations as well, technology being added. And it's certainly a fantastic tournament to be part of. Interested to see where Sunil Narayan goes from here in terms of his bowling changes. We've seen a couple of overs from Hussain, which has been good. Russell in his second over, he's been good as well. Oh, that's hit so hard. Well, he's making it look easy. The pressure is not mounting on him, that is for sure. He is so good through the cover. All he does is just front, clear his front leg and then those long levers come into play. Watches the ball closely. The, the left leg goes a little bit wide and then the extension of the arms. It's a good reply, but this is the tough thing for the Abu Dhabi Knight Riders. Because they don't have runs on the board, even one boundary like that just sets them so far back. After all of that, those three excellent overs and putting pressure, that one boundary just changes things dramatically. Now, all of a sudden, the required run rate's under six and over again. Now you've got to almost start all over again. So it's tough. The bowlers are, are trying, but unfortunately, the batter's just not quite putting the runs on the board. Nice changer, very nice. Seven overs gone, it's 56 for two. Well, that's the reason they have to keep on picking wickets. If they don't carry on picking wickets, this is going to be walk in the park. This is not going to be any issue because the runs are not enough. 78 required of 78 balls on this sort of placid pitch. I don't see they'll have any issue. But if they lose wickets or they catch, which they just drop. They cannot afford to drop any catch. They've got to take every opportunity and then they might have slightest of the chances to win this game. Yeah. So it's going to continue. Oh. That single will give us a chance to go back to Viz Voice. Yeah, we haven't seen anything of Sunil Narine yet. Uh, we're into the eighth over, and one reason for that could be um, Alex, is, Alex Hale's head-to-head -head record against him is very good. He's batted against him in eight innings, only got, only got him out once, and his strike rate's 146. So that could be something that's tempting the captain away from bringing himself on, even at this late stage. Yeah, and I, and I did get the, the, the matchups, and, and all of those are important. Oh. And you have to ask yourself the question, how long do you wait? Because if you keep holding yourself back because of maybe analysis of one matchup that maybe hasn't gone your way in the past, when do you bowl yourself? Eventually the game is done by that stage. You can't have an effect on the game. Yeah, he should have... Uh taken the ball up front and, and, and should have let the lead from the front and say look I'll get you a wicket and then we'll see how it goes with the other bowlers oh. especially when you have such a small total you need your best bowlers to be bowling early on and giving the breakthroughs and he hasn't really looked like warming up even so I'm not sure if he's carrying any injury or any other issue but he should have been bowling. He should have bowled at least two overs by now. It's a nice sir, bit of placement. And the scoreboard keeps ticking over. He's a wicket taker, without a doubt. Look at the experience. He carries 435 games. 
and uh, 474 wickets and he hasn't bowled yet that's unreal yeah, the other night in the, the, pre the previous game he also bought himself on what we thought was a bit late it was the eighth over and we're in the eighth over now and he hasn't even bowled tonight so i know he's saying his ball quite nicely and i understand keeping him on possibly but i just think you've got to go to a wicket taker it's not about keeping it quiet you've got to, you need wickets Oh, it's nicely bowled. Well, I understand if you have big score under your belt or, or in your bank. When you have small total, you need your best bowler to bowl. As simple as that. This was a beautiful delivery. Excellent delivery. Arm ball with the seam. Love the creativity. Again, knowing that the boundaries are so big, there's lots of pockets, lots of space. They get an easy two. 63 for two. Well, 63 for two, all going relatively smoothly for the Vipers. Now, he is playing. He is captain. All the discussion for the last 20 minutes has been, when's he going to bowl? The answer is right now. Get it out! Oh. And the first ball is a miscue, yeah, yeah, yeah. brings a miscue. I think that's a new delivery he learned. Just a normal swing with the seam, maybe not the carom ball. I mean, he's a wicket taker. He's got three wickets so far in this DP World ILT20. Economy rate is still good. Look at the average as well. So he should have been bowling a little earlier in power play. The only way they can win from here is to get wickets. Well, I agree. The conversation was about matchups. We saw the figures about the matchup against Hales. Pulled away. Now, has that got enough to split the gap? Not quite. Good fielding. Yeah, you talk about the matchups, but actually sometimes you forget about the matchups and you have to work first and foremost with the match situation. No use waiting, as they quite rightly said, and as you've quite rightly said as well, Waz. No use waiting until the match is lost. I mean, for Vipers, they don't need to rush. They can see him off, go four and over, five and over. No rush whatsoever. They only required a 68. With eight wickets in hand, Alex is looking good as ever, 30 of 24. Yeah, a lot of the hard work has indeed been done by the Desert Vipers, firstly in the field. Now made all the progress they need so far with the bat. Oh, that was good. And these two, of course, Hales and Billings. Previous match, big partnership, just saw them through nicely. It would appear their form continues in the same sort of vein here tonight as well. In the, not the most demanding of situations. No pressure on both the batters uh, in this game so far. Oh, quick sw swing and played nicely by Alex Sales. Nine overs gone. 68 for two. Yes, I mean, Hales can afford to have a look at uh, Narayan. The situation is very much in Viper's uh, favour. Hales, that single, carries striding down towards the dugouts because, guess what? It's time for a timeout.
So timeout is nearly timed out. Just a few more seconds. Just wonder what they talk about sometimes. I've been involved with this uh, franchise cricket. Ah oh, yes, you're the man, Wes. You're the man. Tell us in a moment. I will in a second. The saying continues. All depends uh, what sort of situation the team in. If they're doing well, they just go say, "Well done, good job." Keep doing the same thing. And then the way night riders are right now, obviously you can just pep them up a bit. You need a couple of wickets and probably you'll back in the game, you know, run of the mill well, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and you get paid how much for that? Extraordinary, isn't it? Not enough. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Handsomely, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the conversations just now would have been very straightforward. The Vipers carry on as you're going because they're doing well. Um, for the night riders, a couple of hat tricks, job done. Nicely struck, the reverse sweep middled. Cut off as well. So he's a very dangerous player, Sam Billings. The, he, the, he plays both sides of the square, and especially this shot, he mastered it. Every time he goes there, he plays it according to the situation the fielder is in. He plays in front of the square. The fielder is behind, behind square, he goes behind the square. So you need practice for this shot, definitely. Yeah, good footwork, just opens himself up so he can punch it through the gap down towards the long on. You just wonder where the inspiration is going to come. I mean, it's clutching at straws for the uh, Knight Riders, but you just wonder how these things can change sometimes. And I think they missed the trick, uh, especially in the first six over their skipper, Sunil Aran, should have bowled at least two overs out of those six. Just to put extra pressure, maybe get a couple of wickets. Uh, but he came back in the ninth over, maybe eighth over of this innings. It was probably too late. 61 required now, with eight wickets in hand. Required run rate just under nine. It's a good batting pitch, no demons in it. Yeah, the it's lovely thing for Vipers is they can afford just to almost play what you might call normal cricket. Plenty of spaces out there, so plenty of gaps for the ones and the twos. The odd boundary will come almost automatically. Well, I can get down. I can get down. Sort of apology. Non striker just in the way. 75 for two. So, halfway mark in terms of the overs, past the halfway mark in terms of the runs required. Partnership of 33 in exactly 33 balls. So it's the obvious thing run a ball. And that's all they need pretty much dead on what they require all the way through so just shows you how theoretically easy the whole thing should be from here oh! at this stage of the game like I said Sunil Narayan should have bowled the fourth over or the third over 
at this stage of the game, they're not going to take risk against him unless he bowls a bad delivery or unless until he bowls an unplayable delivery. I mean, no doubt he's one of the best bowlers in this format. The way he bowls, the variation he has got. But that's what they're going to do. Both experience the T20 batters, Sam Billings and Alex Hales, just rotate the strike. Yeah, the biggest problem for Narayan is not necessarily where he bowls himself, although this argument persists. But it's just trying to somehow watch his batsman get some runs. And one notable score, that of uh, Brandon King, 57 today. That's it, pretty much. Asalanka, 26. That was the next highest. Ooh, that's a bit of a miscue. A little bit of deception there, but again, the odd miscue, the odd single miss, not a jot of difference to the progress of the Vipers. They're still, still very much on course. Yeah, the thing that would make a difference for Narayan is if they get a decent target, decent total on the board. Then he's got something to work with, everyone else has got something to work with, they can apply some pressure. Oh! You just don't get the impression that there is any pressure whatsoever at the moment, and that's just purely a result of the circumstances. Enjoying their batting, both the batters from the Desert Vipers. No rush, run a ball, four runs from the over already. Let's go, boys, let's go, boys, let's go, boys. You're absolutely spot on, David. 170, 165 would have been a very decent total, especially with this bowling. And Sunil Narayan would have been very useful uh, coming out at eight, coming on on eighth over. But uh, that wasn't the case. Lovely shot, just a little bit short, that was all. The opportunity taken with both hands, 84 for two. see that uh, Alex Hales is indeed a man in form. Sam Billings as well. Billings here, the man, just to rock back. Take advantage of that little drop in length. The placement is all he needed. The placement and the timing. A wry look askance from Sunil Narayan. This partnership is worth 42 now of uh, 39 balls, no pressure. They're literally enjoying their batting out there. Alex Hales and Sam Billings on 23, Hales on 37. Change of bowling now. Akil Hussain have bowled his uh, four overs quota, 24 for one. And Andre Russell uh, will take the ball now. Fine leg up, third man up. He's got mid-wicket, mid-on and uh, square leg back on the boundary leg side. Yeah, it's all very well putting hands on head as if to say, oh, that nearly maybe somehow just about got through, but didn't. What they need is something that does get through. And then another one that gets through or brings a wicket somehow. And obviously, the body language is not that great. It's kind of writing on the wall. Takes even more pace off. It's a loopy, almost Yorker. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. So they're trying to get wickets here. Andrew Russell, first ball, 115 kilometer. Second ball, 105 kilometer. So he's not sprinting in, is he? He's not wasting energy, that's for sure. Could still be the art of deception, though. Still floating it up there. Good running, coming back for the second quickly there. Now, early in the day, Hasaranga playing his first match of this tournament was excellent. Picked up three wickets. Uh, makes him a Sports, 11, Sports Buzz 11 buzz maker of the match contender. I'm buzzing just saying it, I can tell you.
Swung away, that'll be four more. It also brings up the 50 partnership. It was a runner ball up until the last few balls. It's now 50 from 43, all looking very easy indeed. Below par performance by Knight Riders, I must say. Average bowling and batting has been very average as well. One 50 that from King who opened the innings. Now Desert Vipers got the control. They bowled well with the new ball. They got wickets uh, uh, early on. 50 or 43 this partnership is worth now. Ah, oh, the tall man, the big man, Tom Moody. Happy, very happy, no doubt, so far with the two matches the Vipers have played. A man who knows all about the art of coaching franchise cricket as well. Timed away, timed beautifully. Despite the dive, still races to the boundary for four. Well, runs on the over. It's only a matter of time now, you know, for the Desert Vipers. Two fours in a row from uh, the man in form, Alex Hales. He's on 48 now, just 35 deliveries. Good effort by Conan Ingram, Ingram, but in vain. Even the Yorker is dealt with very effectively. Digs it out, squeezes it firmly down the ground for two more. Productive over, 14 from it, 98 for two. So, 50 for Alex Hale's second successive half-century in this DP World ILT20. Looks in top form and looks very relaxed out there as well. 98 for two. Follow their social media. There's, there's a Viper said there's a hailstorm coming. 50 not out of 36. Back to back half centuries for Alex Hales, the brilliant opening batter. World Cup winner. Great to see him back in an English shirt. Great to see him here at the DP World ILT20. On the reverse, Sam Billings. There is protection. Strolling to victory. Sprinting into a spot is Wakar Yunus. Pretty one-sided affair so far. They needed wickets. They could only manage two. Brilliant knock by Alex Hales. 50 of only 36 deliveries. Magnificent player. I really enjoy watching him play. Catcher on the drive for Narine. Yeah, you were speaking off air how much admiration you've got. Brilliant running. Sam Billings, that is exceptional. Not all about boundaries, big hits. Billings was in and out at the striker's end to get back for two to give Hale to strike brilliantly there. I feel Alex Hales understands the game really well, reads the game well, and plays accordingly. If this would have been 200 chairs, he would have been playing on a, on a different planet. But he knows that all they need is just avoid giving Narayana wicket. He's getting a little bit of spin out of this surface. This surface is getting a little dry now. Yeah, and it's exactly the opposite to what Abu Dhabi Knight Riders did to Hasaranga. They gifted Hasaranga wickets, the trump card. Narayana is a trump card for the Knight Riders, so the Viper said, we're not going to give you anything. Experience, though, Waka. Three, four years ago, Alex Hales may not have been as consistent the last three to four years going around the world playing franchise cricket he's got such a better understanding of the game and how to marshal a chase 
Well, he's missed out for three, four seasons, isn't it? Just for certain reasons. Let's not go there. But uh, he came back with the bang. And it's good that England has given him opportunity again. And uh, and he's still got plenty in him. He's served PSL really well. He, he played really well for Islamabad United. And then I think, I think if I'm not wrong, he was he went to Karachi. Not sure, though. Well, another over. Safely negotiated by Hales and Billings. 13 done, 104 for two. Well, plenty of work for Sunderland Ryan, the captain, to do, not just in the next 20 or 30 minutes, but you feel the next three weeks. Staring down the barrel of North from three. The Vipers have been good, really good this evening. The bat ball and in the field, they look a well, well oiled machine under the tutelage of Tom Moody, who's been around the block many times and still doing his thing. Kumara back in. Well, that's terrible. It's a slower ball attempted, it's a wide down leg side. Hales is disappointed, didn't catch up with it. Game's coming thick and fast. The encounters continue tomorrow. Gulf Giants, they are flying against Dubai Capitals, led by Rovman Powell. That's in Sharjah tomorrow, 7 p.m. IST. That should be a cracker. Small ground, big hitters, plenty of quality there. Gulf Giants are going really well. Plenty up for grabs, not just the trophy itself. I saw a picture of yourself, Walker, with the white belt earlier on. Talk us through this. Look, it's a beautiful trophy, or not trophy, a belt. And it's a big change. And I like it. I think it's good. It's a great innovation. And then they look at the names there. Imran Tahir, Dwayne Bravo, Junaid Siddiqui, Mujibur Rahman there. So oh, it's early days, though. This uh, belt will go left, right, centre, all over the place. On the charge, up and over, extra. That's a brilliant shot, Alex Hales. He's had enough now. He says, right, let's get this game done and dusted. Let's get on the coach and back to the hotel. That's a beauty. Good footwork. Doesn't try to overhit it. Yeah, he controlled it beautifully. He gave himself room. It's not the first time we've seen that. We saw earlier also when he moves away. Gives himself uh, a little bit of room or, or allow his arms to come through nicely. And then he picks his gap beautifully. Change up. You make a good point about Hales back in the England team because Johnny Bairstow out injured for the World Cup. Jason Roy had a really poor summer back in the UK, internationally and domestically. So all of a sudden England went from having three gun batters there who could open with Butler to just Joss Butler. So the return of Alex Hales was much needed and then the way he returned was absolutely exceptional. Yeah, it's such a shame that uh, he, he didn't play those years, which he could have been easily be at his prime. He's still at his prime, but uh, of course, missing out in a couple of years. That doesn't really help your record, doesn't really help your name going around the world. I mean, there's so many great players. I mean, this format has brought in. But uh, he's definitely up there in the top, in the top, maybe three, top four. One. I like him. You've told me the top one. No, so. that's for me is top one. But overall, I feel if I ask you, you'll probably put him in top three, if I'm not wrong. I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> yeah, wonderful player. Really good player, top class. Deep in the crease, swats it, swats it away past Dre Ross, who's inside the ring. Another boundary for Hales, who is, well, he's chasing down that top run score. 
position. He missed out on a couple of slow deliveries early on. This time he waited, although he didn't get all of it. He hit the top part of the bat. But because the fielder at fine leg was in the circle and the pace really took the ball very quickly to the boundary. Thumped. It's probably the only way he could describe that to the sweeper. Excellent over, 14 done. 116 for two. Well, Alex Hales trying to get this done quickly. Sam Billings just saying, I'll give you the strike. Lovely partnership. We're at 74 or 58. Billings is just ticking over a runner ball. Hale's going at 142. Very, very happy dressing room. Seventy-four of fifty-eight. That's called smart partnership. Without taking much of a risk, the shots they played. Clip the pad, I think. Rob Tucker says. Rod Tucker says no. Clip nothing. Sent it upstairs. Sent it upstairs. This is interesting. In hope, I think, as opposed to. Sending it up in hope, I think, as opposed to anticipation. Well, this is, uh, I mean, I can't call it a turning point because he's played really well. He's uh, took his team almost to the victory, but uh, just a moral victory. It might be a, a little inside edge on it. Uh, no issue there right behind the line there's plenty of boot behind that line and uh, ball just spinning a little bit away from him mm, I think it's just a little clip of the that high pad or maybe the boot but is there another sound before that that's what we're gonna see with the snicker yeah, don't think there's anything on ultra edge straight off the pad yet Good take, Kenar Lewis. Good work behind the stumps. I just felt I felt it was just flicked the pad. Rod Tucker thought it was hit nothing because he had given a wide. So yeah, not out. He's just got to reverse that wide decision. So all in all, a dot ball. After all that commotion. Oh, gone, gone, gone! Dragged on. Too full, Hale just trying to work it legs uh, offside for a single and just perishes right at the back end with the win in sight. Alex Hales was a little bit extra careful. Just wanted to tap it down for single rather than just rocking back and smacking it. He just wanted to just push for single, go to the other end and let Bills take, take care of the rest. And uh, Narayan picking up his first wicket. He should have been bowling a lot earlier. Well, he's picked up uh, the wicket now of uh, Alex Hayes, who played superbly well. 64 of 46 is 117 for three. Well, the Vipers have lost their third. New man in, Shafane Rutherford. Good striker of the ball. Left-hander. Narayan with a slip in play. Oh, nice touch. Really nice touch. Just let the ball roll straight into the blade. Use the pace. Billings wanted three. Rutherford said no. 
Hales just a little bit cautious, very unhales like in that dismissal, Walker. Yeah, maybe the ball was a touch fuller to play that uh, a dab shot. Yeah, he played so well through the cover. We could have easily pushed it with a straighter bat and could have taken a single. Well, squirted away. Gets plenty of bat on it. Sabir's chasing. Is he going to haul it in? I think this might be a barely. I reckon his right foot. Well, 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 well. <laughs> oh, you got to love the ball boy getting involved. Good lad. He says, you guys aren't playing too well. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> I think he was sure that uh, when the ball was stopped, the fielder was over the line. He had a big smile on his face. He says, I don't know. The kid picked it up. He gave it to me. Fair enough. Watch that. I think there. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he's done a good job. And the extra help from the, the kid there. Look at the reactions of the youngster. He sees his opportunity. Well, 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 I think I think the fielder did okay. I thought maybe his right foot just hit the turf. People eyeing the ball in his hand and, and the right foot. Does it just plant? That's okay, that's okay. Ball gone. I think he's done pretty well. And then the youngster, who's got a day off from school today, says, I'm going to get my moment of fame. Here you go. So what would you call that? Would you call that a four? Well done. Yeah. At least, at least he's brought smile on everyone's face. I don't think the umpire is going to call that a four. Well done. Made his day. Made his evening. Ah, he wasn't to know. No problem. No harm done. I love that. The youngster, yeah. so keen, well brilliant effort. He'll be in school tomorrow, and all his mates will be saying, I saw you on the telly. <laughs> Give us a smile, youth. Left arm quick, too. Left arm quickie. I think he's still in the shock. He's looking yeah. himself in the big screen, and he's stunned. And he feels that he's done something wrong. He didn't. It's OK. It's not the end of the world. Oh, he might try and arrange the match baller. A little bit of memorabilia for the youth. 15 done. 122 for three. Well, just 12 to win. Oh, 30 balls, so it's a cruise, a stroll, a cakewalk. By well, the Vipers, who have been excellent all night. They have been so, so impressive. Game being played in good spirits. 133 for eight night riders, never enough. Vipers strolling to victory. 12 to win. Well, game seven. One way traffic. The Vipers, they're going to go two from two. And for the night riders fans out there, you're going north from three. You're going to join the Charger Warriors north from three. Banged in to Billings, who swats at leg side. Mopped up. Well, this wonderful bike from the Cycle Hub is for the catch of the tournament. So, any cricketer out there in this next two or three weeks who grabs one out of thin air, you're cycling home. Forget your flight. Oh, half volley, but Sam Billings helps himself and climbs into a cover of drive for four. Russell's having a tough time in the field this evening. He was gone for duck, first ball, and then when he came to ball, he did ball the odd good delivery, but it was just a full length, easy delivery to put up, put away. Got in a very good position, Billings, to hit that. Oh, leg side. No real pace. 
behind these deliveries. Just 123 Ks. The previous ball that was cover driven was only 119. So Andre Russell certainly not operating at optimal pace. I just wonder how how the body is. He's had a lot of injuries down the years. Knee. Just wonder is he operating at full tilt. Narayan and company have to really dig deep, have a maybe long chat and see where things are going wrong, work on their tactics. Losing three games on the trot, I know there's still plenty of time in this tournament, but it is going to be hard for them. They have to start winning. Well, up in the air and up and away, and that will be the match. That will be the win for the Desert Viper, Shafain Rutherford. Just bangs it away, leg side. It was short, it was there to be hit. And it's the fifth successful run chase in this tournament. And that is an absolute piece of cake, really, for the Vipers. Winning by seven wickets here in Dubai against the, well, the struggling Abu Dhabi Knight Riders. High fives all around, and why not? The men in red have been exceptional again. Sam Billings, well, he just went about his business. His professional like performance with the bat in hand. Alex Hales up top was exceptional with a beautiful half century. Tom Moody, director of cricket, he'll be a very happy man. His players are not letting him down. You're only as good as your players when you're a coach. And so far, the Vipers players have been superb.